You are a great fool. We are singing God they do and people they see and some people still stand like this. What do you talk? <laughs> stand up here. Yeah? Oh, yes. Man, I'll drive you. <laughs> Hear me? You need excitement to see accomplishment. You need excitement to see accomplishment. Church is not where you go and frown face. If not, you will fry your destiny. <laughs> Please, when you come, get excited. God is not behind your problem. He's the one that will solve your problem. Please. <laughs> That will solve your problem. So don't frown. You don't go to the house of a big man frowning your face. Even when the thing is hard, you try to pretend that if all is well. Are you? <laughs> Church is place where you go and things get better. Not where you go and things get worse. That's why they will say, I was glad when they say, come let us go to the house of God. I want to announce to someone right today's date your financial story must change. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Whether somebody do you or you do yourself, I will undo both today in the name of Jesus. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. And that's why you must thank the unchangeable God that has the power to change everything. That you are in his court where he can change you. Lift up your voice and say, Lord, I thank you because you can change my story. You are giving me a financial change of story. Today we mark the end of lack. Today we mark the end of borrowing. Today we mark the end of financial reproach in my life. Lord, I thank you. 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 I give you praise. I give you glory. I bless your name. I bless your name. I bless your name. I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. I thank you. I thank you. Jesus, I thank you for what you are set to do. Thank you because you are changing my financial story in this service. I return all the glory to your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Any power that vowed you will not prosper. By the grace of prosperity at work through me, even the backing of this commission, that yoke will leave you today. Wherever they tied your hand and your legs and vowed that nothing good will enter your hand and that your leg will not step into great places, that evil cause goes back to the sender. Any man that said over their dead body, will they see you amount to anything great financially? I stand on this altar to confirm their dead body. Amen. There we go down in the name of Jesus. Amen. You that I'm seeing now that they have mocked because of money, watch out. This same year, the same mouth that mocked you, you will be a blessing to them. You will pay their children's school fees. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Any witchcraft power that they use in closing your family door, I decree with prophetic authority, your family door is declared open. Amen. Say amen like a believer. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Put those hands together for the Lord and please take your seat. God bless you.
in the first service I announced to us I want to say to someone God's will number one for your life is that you prosper tell your neighbor I must prosper the name of your village is not important the family you were born into is not an issue you are not born of your village you are born of the spirit he that is born of the flesh is flesh he that is born of the spirit is what spirit he said i wish above all things how many things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. So when God looks at his list, because every one of us here we have lists, as his list of things that should be done, things that should be accomplished, his number one priority for you is that you prosper. For I know the plan that I think towards you plans to prosper you. He has wished it. He has also designed plans. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. Look at it in on the board. Plans to prosper you. The day I saw Joel Austin dissect that word, plans, and I now knew that God is a master strategist. He moves you from face to face. Connect you to help us. Connect you to opportunities. Why? He's bringing to pass his good plans. Plans to prosper you. So if somebody is wishing you poor, he's fighting God. If someone is thinking how you will go down, he's fighting God. I hear me. When God fights you, you better say train jam you. You better make train jam you than God fights you. Whosoever falleth upon this stone shall be broken in pieces. But whosoever this stone falleth upon shall be what? Grinded to powder. I hope you know God fights people. He said, I will be an enemy to your enemy. And an adversary to your adversary. So whoever is fighting your plans of prosperity is an enemy of God. Tell that man to remove that his glass. There is no uh, Sunday, do you hear? Remove that your glass. You'll be like a village boy. <laughs> Praise God. Are a correct boy. Are a correct boy. So see me after service. Are you hearing me now? I want you to be dressing like me. So I will, I will buff you. So whoever is wishing you poverty, they will smell. I said that we smell. Yeah. Do you know why? My counsel shall stand and I will do all of my good pleasure. Even if they make plans to fight it, they're only helping you. They fought Joseph. They didn't know they were helping Joseph. Let's do away with this dreamer. How can you say we will bow to you? Say God punish you. His brothers, they were telling him, God punish you. Go see yourself. They didn't know they were helping Joseph. They sold him as a slave. Threw him into the pit, sold him as a slave from there. They didn't know they would come and meet him. Anyone fighting you now, will soon, he will still come to meet you. Please, anything I say, write it down. They will still come to meet you. I said they will come to meet you. 
Why I say so, your life is in the agenda of God. When your life is in the agenda of God, he protects his agenda. He guides his agenda to make sure it comes to pass. So God's word has an inbuilt force that can make whatever he says come to pass. He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish and prosper in the thing wheresoever I send it. Jesus said in John 6, 63, he said, these words that I speak, they are spirit and they are what? Life. And the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. So every time God is saying it, and you care to believe it, your story has started changing. God has no problem giving you your financial destiny. Do you believe him? Many people believe more of their work. Man must struggle. That is the satanic slogan. Man must struggle. Man must hustle. Hear me? Prosperity is not equal to hustling. Please, I beg you. The race is not to the swift. Neither yet battle to the strong. Neither yet favor to men of skill. It's a time and chance happening to them all. And I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And show compassion on whom I will show compassion. So it's not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. There are people that have hustled and they've been hustled out. they fizzled out. One of my members in Benin, she makes, makes industrial soap, industrial detergent. She supplies. His son just graduated from university and he wants to go to Spain. He now followed all these uh, bad boys. All these Bini boys that are looking for her, they will go to Spain through Italy. Now go save her. Then flog her, man. The mother had to send the picture. That was what saved him for prophetic intervention. Will, they will have killed him. He said it was getting to his turn for, them, for him to be killed. They would just come pick slaughter. Those people that are buying human parts. Why? He wants to hustle. Your destiny is not in hustling. If you are hustling, you have abandoned God's plan. You cannot outplan God. So, when it was getting to his turn, there were almost five remaining. So, all of a sudden, someone now came and bought them as a slave. And as they bought them as a slave, where they took him to? The house head now saw that he was always praying. You know they go to church before? <laughs> was praying, behaving as if he was a spiritual. So when the girl will be giving food, they will give him food specially. So one day, she now targeted when the man went out. He now arranged with someone that will make him escape. That was how that brother escaped. And funny enough, the gay full of escape. He said, Go marry him. <laughs> that was how he escaped, too. So when he finally escaped, he said, Mommy, God has delivered me. Oh. The gay saved me, so I want to marry her. So the mother was now asking me, Should he marry her? I said, use your tongue, count your teeth. <laughs> you name the meaning of what I said? Who are you? <laughs> use your tongue and count your what? I said, my hand no did that one. Where I pray, reach, continue the rest. <laughs> finally, finally, they married. That one no concern me. The only concern was that your son didn't die. Two of us. But what I was trying to make you understand, you don't need to go that length to damage your life. Every hustler is confirming the evil load of punishment. 
Hustling is equals punishing. Why? I can work it out. No. I'm not saying you can't work it out. Scripture also told us, he that must not walk, let him not what? Eat. But don't go and put your hand in what will cut your life short. God delights everybody here to prosper. If all of us here have a um, 33,000 liter tanker and put our pipe in Babbage, we cannot empty Babbage. In fact, what we just collected is one cup. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? What we collected is just what? One cup. Babbage will still maintain its, its size. That's why if you become a billionaire, it cannot stop Mike from becoming a billionaire. It cannot stop Kelly from becoming a billionaire. It cannot stop Amos from becoming a billionaire. It cannot stop uh, Madawa from becoming a billionaire. You too, you can become a billionaire. Ah. Hustle and kill yourself is not your portion. Amen. There is an agenda of God. You must understand God's perfect plan for your life. So when you believe God, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want. When God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo, read Gloria Copeland's book, God's will for you is prosperity. Now let me talk about Gloria Copeland. Copeland is a trained pilot. He still flies to today. At age, 80, is he 81 or 82? 81. 82. By, Dece by December. By December. At his age, he's still flying. When God called them, their first concern is, what will we eat? So, the woman said, she began to read the Bible even though she was not understanding anything. She was just reading, just reading, reading. The only thing that was catching her interest was the promises of God. I will make a way for you. I will open doors for you. She was just getting interested. At their level then, they were feeding on normal poor people food, potato. And they were using this big bonvita, konko. This big bonvita. That's what they were using to cook. That will, that will let you know how things were rough. So from then, she now got a little job while he himself was uh, um, dubbing, uh, was the studio manager for Kenneth Egan then, was just dubbing messages. From there, she now got a job. From the little job they were now managing, sustaining the 14th Kong Poko. I tell you the truth. Go change your story. Yeah. Today, as of today, if I can be correct, Copeland has given nothing less than 30 airplane. How many? The one he's using now is one of the latest models. Say with me, latest. Yes. Not that um, American president bought a Dashimo. Where he's living, you will pass nothing less than four gates. The final gate is handprint that the, the gate will open for you. You must come down. Many of you have not seen Papa's new house. Papa just copied the pattern. They call it a mandate. The house is, in fact, the day I went there, I couldn't sleep. I tell you, and I, you know, I, I won't lie to you. This is altar. I say I couldn't sleep. If you see house, oh my God. I said he just copied Copeland's pattern. Now, he has an helicopter landing platform in his house. Poverty. No cold disease, oh. It's witchcraft. They saw God's plan for them in the book. 
and they began to follow it and God brought them to where they are. Permit me to say this. Copeland is not working in CBN. He's, he's not working in White House. God gave them their own blessing by giving them an oily well. I hope you know Copeland has an oily well. So any person that is angry with me that I'm doing business, I'll curse you. Not true now. When they located it, at first, she said, we didn't know how it will work, but we believe this God that it will work. Because we have seen the footprint of his faithfulness. Now hear me. The little, little things you are seeing now is a pointer that great thing is about to happen. Am I saying something to somebody? The little, little things you are seeing now is a sign that something big is about to happen to you. That is where you need to settle down and see something because your prosperity is defined by what you see. Now let me say this as an example. Somebody's highest dream here and now can be to build a three bedroom flat. God will still give it to you. You see, some people don't say amen. Shh. While in your destiny is an estate, and you are saying amen to three bedroom flat. Is somebody understanding where I'm going? In your destiny, God has programmed you to have estates. You see, you can't even say amen. Do you know why the amen is too big for their mouth? They can never see it. It's, ah, it's too big. No wonder God blesses you on the principle of as far as your eyes can see. If you see small, you will live small. But if you see big, you will do what? You will end up big. Tell your neighbor, I will end up big. In Genesis chapter 14, is it chapter 14 or chapter 13? Chapter 13 verse 14. Studio. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after the lot has separated from him. Pause first, don't remove it too. There are some people that are making you not to see well now. So they need to leave you. Do you agree with me now? Yes. There are some people around you, as long as they are with you, you will never see anything good. The only thing you'll be seeing is the info they are telling you. Hear me. Vision is influenced by association. When you work with a visionary, you begin to see like them. Vision is influenced by association. And lack of vision is also influenced by wrong association. He that walk with the wise shall be wise. A companion of fools shall be what? Destroyed. There are people that can make you not to see well. They will reduce you to your think poverty state. The poor state in which they are, they make sure you remain in that state. They make sure you don't go far. No wonder if Biomi is thinking like Papa, acting like Papa, reflecting Papa. You can't walk with a visionary and behave like a chicken. Anytime I call my son, I ask them, are you an eagle or you're a chicken? They will burst into laughter and say, I'm an eagle, I'm an eagle. So stop following the crowd. Fly. If you follow chicken, you go behave like chicken. But eagles, they always do what? They fly. Do you want to fly? Yeah. When you walk with visionary, you begin to see. You begin tell your neighbor, I need to see. That blind man say, I want to see. Many are looking, few are seeing. Many are doing what? Few are doing what? He said, lift up now thy eyes. 
and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward for all the land which thou seest you look to do what see to thee will i give it and to thy seed forever god operates a principle as far as your eyes can see no wonder the father you see the father you go if your vision is not being improved on a monthly quarterly basis you are not seeing well you are not seeing well so when papa carried the book god's will for you prosperity he came out he said i can never be poor he has seen something tell your neighbor he has seen something now my question for you is where do you see yourself two years from now three years from now five years from now where do you see yourself i didn't say this in the first service but i must say it in this service please if you care to believe what i want to tell you now go and have something of this size okay you can have a size of this small tv or you can have this side of what I call a vision board. My vision board was destroyed when we were coming on transfer because of the fragile nature. I don't know how they packed it. The thing got broken. Now, that vision board is a picture of what I want to see in my destiny. What I want to see for my family. In so and so year, we'll be here. In so and so year, we'll be here. Now, the more you see it, the more it dwells in your subconscious. As a man tinkered in his heart. Life drives you in the direction of what you see. Not how people feel about you. Anybody is free to feel anything. As I'm even standing here now. You are free to feel anything. No? But you are the one that is suffering what you are feeling. It's true. You are free to feel anything. Anybody is free to tell you anything. But you are the one that is suffering. I'm just killing height. Because what you are seeing is different from what I am seeing. Simple. When you have seen it and you care to believe it, that's where you now come, Lord, it's not by power. It's not by might. I believe you, you can make me rich here. I enter into a covenant with you to reach here. I want to be here. Hear me? You can define where you will reach. You can define how high you will rise. No man places a limit on you. You place a limit on how far you can go. People that enter covenant, it is based on what they have seen. What have you seen? He told Abraham, as far as your eyes can see, I will give it to you. No wonder Abraham believed God and scripture said it was counted to him for what? Righteousness. He believed God. Tell your neighbor, believe God. Believe God. Scripture said, blessed is she that believeth for there shall be a performance. Your believing determines his performance. Your believing. Jesus said, if thou canst believe, thou shall see. <laughs> Now you are seen. Now he said, if you believe, you will see. If thou canst believe, thou shalt see the glory, the goodness. Your opportunities in life is tied to what you believe. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Why are you entering into a covenant with God? Why? Why? The reason why we enter into covenant with God because he cannot change. He cannot lie. Psalm 89 and verse 34. My covenant will I not break nor alter the word that have gone out of my mouth. By myself have I sworn in blessing I will bless you. In multiplying I will multiply you. I will bless you. I will multiply you. And we have proofs of people that he has blessed. 
That's where you now come into a covenant path with God. Lord, I enter into an agreement with you today. If you will lead me, if you will guide me to get to this place, I will serve you all the rest of my life. If this is what you are going to do, I will never stop paying my tithe. Like that, my friend. He said, I will give to the poor. I will give to the, every church project. I will not take my eyes off the widows. God said, are you sure? He said, yes. God said, write it down. He wrote it down. I'm from nowhere. Say with me, from nowhere. You know, the covenant you enter determine the kind of people God bring your way. I prove that. He said, from nowhere, like I said the other day, he used to do Osusu. Say with me, Osusu. Osusu is daily contribution. All those people that go from shop to shop, two two naira, three three naira, five five naira. That's what he was doing. All of a sudden, someone now called him. Where are you? He said, hey, I'm so and so place. And I said, Okay, I'm coming to meet you. The first question the man asked him, Can you do this thing? And I asked him, What is that? He said, I cannot. He said, But if I guide you, will you do it? He said, Yes. That was how they now carried him to one of the managers that receive people that supply badge. Badge is this, um, um, it's like a container that moves on water. They use in storing oil. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That was how God opened this door from supplying one. And as at that time, they were paying 500,000 per day. Yes. So he didn't have money, he had to go and rent. That was how he started. From renting, he started producing. So he was producing for Elf, was producing for Shell. So his story just turned around. Turned around. So he closed the Osusu business. He now set up his own office. Because the Osusu business, you were a worker. Worker. You are now a worker about. In fact, you will chop more than four times. You will chop, 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 chop. When you stop, you start chopping again. You continue, continue, continue. And at the end, you may carry arthritis for too much worker, worker. And he started paying his tithe regularly. Say with me, regularly. 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 What makes you believe the covenant is your giving. You don't have a covenant if you are struggling in giving. Please write it down. Anyone that is struggling in giving, he does not have a covenant with God. No wonder when it comes to giving, some people, any moment they hear giving in church, their, their mind, they boil like pepper. Why will pastor be talking about giving? If giving annoys you, the spirit of poverty of your father's house is pursuing you. Check it. Anytime you hear giving and you are angry, and you are offended is the demon of poverty. Why? Satan can never encourage you to give. Satan cannot encourage you to give. That's why when you are giving, he tell you, be careful. You know, this pastor, they have sweet mouth. Be careful though. Every time they talk about giving, it's because part of the giving will come to them. It's a lie. I am a giver. In fact, a more dangerous one. Until you are a dangerous giver, <laughs> you may not experience dangerous receiving. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Huh? That was what Papa did. <laughs> God asked him one day, what have you brought for me? So what? And he was thinking, what do I have to give God? What do I have to give God? So he now told his wife, buy your salary, bring it. The woman didn't complain. If it were to be some woman, say, for what? Now you go call, oh God, no coming. 
<laughs> the woman didn't complain. He said, he just asked her, I hope no problem. He said, no, God needs it. Immediately they surrendered it. God said, my son David, even if you don't want to be rich, it is too late. You know, Satan cannot tell you that kind of a thing. My son David, even if you don't want to be rich, it is too late. And after she gave it, I heard Papa say one day, for that singular act that she did, I can own a car factory because of her. Just because of that thing. No wonder every year the woman they change car. If you like, break your head though. No be her fault. She has paid her dues. Am I saying the truth? He believed the covenant. Hear me? Like I said in the first service, believing in the covenant is not having faith. Believing in the covenant is trusting God. Trust is stronger than faith because faith can fail. Jesus said unto Peter, Simon Peter, I have prayed for you that thy faith faileth not. Faith can fail. But trust can fail. The covenant is anchored on trust. That whether sun or rain, I still stay with you. That is trust. People that trust God, nothing shake them. They are like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. They that trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. Can be moved. So when he entered into that path with God, everything changed. Say with me, everything changed. I heard Papa say again, he stopped collecting salary in 1986. 19 what? That was when he stopped collecting salary. The giving law is what establishes the covenant. Through your giving, you can reach where God has ordained you in life to reach. Hear me? Giving does not start when you have 1,000. Giving starts when you have 10 naira or 5 naira. Giving, it starts. You don't give only when you get big. You start giving when it is small. And scripture said, though that beginning be small, that latter end shall greatly increase. Let me write this down in case you forget every other thing. It is your giving today that defines your future tomorrow. It is your giving today that defines your future tomorrow. Your giving defines your future. Your giving defines your children's future. Your giving defines your family future. So if you are not delighted in giving, you, don't, you cannot secure your future. The moment Abraham entered that covenant with God, God tested him. Abraham, show you say you want to follow me. Give me your son. My only son that I've waited for for 25 years. He carried the boy. The boy followed him. Papa, where are we going now? He said, we are going to offer a sacrifice unto the Lord. He said, where is the lamb if it's a sacrifice? And he said, the Lord himself shall provide himself a lamb. So with that, the boy did not, didn't worry. He said, God will provide because he knows that God is a provider. And immediately they got there. He didn't tell him. He just mounted him. If he had told him that he was the one that he will use, <laughs> that boy will run. Say with me, he will run. He will run. Me. You won't use me for sacrifice. So you are a cultic man. So the boy followed him. And when they got there, just put him. He said, God knows what he's doing. As Abraham lifted, God said, don't touch him. He said, now I know that thou fear me. Hear me. 
until you give to the point where God swears on you, you have not started. In 2004, Papa shared a message that I will never forget. He calls it the giving test. Everybody will write his own test. God will be testing our giving level to determine our next level. He will be testing you. Some people are still struggling now to pay Shiloh's sacrifice of 10,000. Others are still struggling to pay Shiloh's sacrifice of 50,000. Others are still struggling to pay Shiloh's sacrifice of 100,000. It's a test. Say with me, it's a test. God will be testing you. As he's testing you, he's qualifying you for the next level. When Abraham passed that test, by myself have I sworn, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. I will be an enemy to your enemy and an adversary to your adversary. In chapter 13. And God blessed him in all things. He was rich in silver, in gold, in cattle. Why? He believed the covenant. The covenant you don't believe, you cannot follow. The reason why you cannot follow it is because you don't believe it, so you'll be struggling. And the moment you begin to struggle, check your covenant. Now let me say this before we move to the next one. When I was transferred from Benin to Refuge, the, the day I got to the church, my heart dropped. Boom! Do you know why? Coming from a big building, resident pastor. You now come to a bacha. Say with me, bacha. They were still, they were still building. The only is just like this one. They were still beauty. This one is uh, over glorified. This one is over glorified. Yeah, isn't he a bachelor? The first thing that struck me was what my master told me. He said, your covenant is stronger than the place. What did I say? So the first service, I dropped my groundbreaking seed. And I've checked it Year one, year two, year three, that I stayed there, my first fruit in the third year was 1.5 million and fraction. Where, where I was coming from, it was 256. Check the growth. Bacha beauty. Compared to a, a, a church of 9,000 plus, coming to a bacha of 1,024. It's not location, it's covenant. What you believe and you act on determine how God blesses you. Abraham believed the covenant. He gave his tithes. Melchizedek was the high priest then. Many of you now, you may claim that you were a student. Oh. I too, I was a student. I was paying tithes. I know you will be quick to tell me that the money is very small. My own too was very small. But I was still paying tight. Your feeding money these days is very big. I own then 300 naira for one month. Calculate it. How much? I didn't say 30,000. 300 naira. 100 naira, 100 naira, 100 naira, three places for one month. I will sleep it tight. From my second year, I stopped going home to collect money. From second year, I stopped going home to collect money. If you can't start practicing tithing from 10 naira, I promise you, when it is 10,000, it will be difficult for you. He that is faithful in little, much shall be added. 
if you cannot be faithful in little, don't wait for when it becomes a million because it will still be difficult. It will be difficult. Even the ones that are working, they don't even have tight booklets. It's my new donera. Angels, they wait for you. Start practicing tithing now. If not, things will get tighter. Your tithe is what unlocks your spiritual cloud. Your tithe is what changes the spiritual climate. Your economy is not Nigerian economy. Your economy is heaven's economy. No wonder I said, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. When you believe the tithing and you keep practicing it, the next thing you become an addicted giver. In tithes, you are giving. Like I said in the first service, parents, start teaching your children how to give tithes. If you don't teach them, very soon they go to thief your money. I say so. Start teaching them tithing. Start teaching them offering. Start teaching them tithing. Start teaching them offering. Start teaching them tithing so that they will, they will grow to understand it that this is our tradition. This is our family lifestyle. We are going to see Bishop Abbey last year. I don't know the particular month. So we now put to 2000 in the envelope. So they opened the envelope. Daddy, how can you be giving us 2000 to give Bishop Abbey? He said, No. I said, Is it your money? He said, Daddy, we know God has blessed you. Increase this money. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I laughed over it, but something registered. How can we be giving a servant of God 2,000? He said, no, make it 5-5. Five, 5, five David, 5 Ebube, me 5. So when we, we go now, the first thing they do, they open the envelope to check whether you have reduced it. Now, if they have that sense for a servant of God, how much more God? When giving becomes your lifestyle, money will no longer be your problem. Giving determines living. How you will live is determined by how you are giving. Not where you are working. I've seen a woman, not a woman, let me call her a lady. She started a business with 5,000. And God changed her story. Change her story. What was her salary? 25,000. Way back 2008, 2009, 25,000. The more you complain, the more things get complicated. But she believed God. From that little business, it was tightening. Giving tights. It was small though. It was tightening. What was he doing? Selling a recharge card. From selling a recharge card and making full call, the person I'm talking about is now a sub-trade partner with MTN. And before you become a sub-trade partner, you must have nothing less than 20 million. Because they give you targets. And God has blessed her any day that there is no sales. What did I say? Two million must drop. Your story must change. Make giving a lifestyle. Don't make it an occasional thing. You have suffered enough. 
Tell your neighbor you have suffered enough. Lastly, let me round up with this. Your seed, say with me, your seed determines your tomorrow. You may claim it is small. But Jesus valued the monster seed. The monster seed is so small. Not those ones they go to Jerusalem and bring. That's not monster seed. That's not monster seed. Monster seed is so small. You will need a microscope to catch a monster seed. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So small. So as small as a monster seed is. Jesus said, even if your faith is as small as a monster seed, he said, can move mountain. Our greatness is tied to our seed. If you plant one maize grain now, how many seeds are you expecting? Who can give me? Eh? You say, wait, make angel no slap you. The least you should expect is 200 seeds. Am I correct? From one, you plant one maize now and it grows and brings out your one bunch. If you pull out all the seeds, the, the least you will get is 200. Am I correct? So every, in every seed, there is a forest. The economy of Ghana was turned around by one man. When he sojourned to Veranda Po and came back, the only thing he brought was cocoa seed. They laughed at him. Whether they go to travel, go places and bring better thing. You now lay cocoa seed with a smell, now you carry come. And from the cocoa seed, they started planting. They started planting from city to city. Today, the economy of Ghana is thriving on that year, year seed. No wonder scripture said, He that goeth forth, bearing precious seed to sow, shall doubtless return. Bringing his sheets with him. You are the one that is calling yourself poor. God didn't call you poor. Your prosperity is in your seed. Tell your neighbor it's in your seed. One year from now, people that mocked you, they will never be able to stand before you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Take giving. Not just as a delight. Make it consistent. 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 It's better to be known as a giver than to be known as a beggar. The security of your tomorrow is tied to your seed, not your work. Let me summarize with this scripture and we rise up to pray. Psalm 20. Psalm 20. The Lord hear thee in the days of trouble. Say good amen. Yeah. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Yeah. Send thee help from the sanctuary. Yeah. Strengthen thee out of Zion. Yeah. Look at verse 3 now. Remember all thy offerings and accept all thy bond sacrifices. The Lord will remember your offering. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. When God remembers your offering, he takes away your suffering. When God remembers your offering, he opens a door for you. I want to let you know from today, you will not know misfortune again. Amen. What is misfortune? Simply means you missed something big. Fortune is something big. You missed an opportunity. And you know, I know that forces can make someone miss an opportunity. 
they will blind his eyes. They will confuse his head. You missed. You simply missed. Not that they rub it on your head. You missed a fortune. You will not miss a fortune. You will not miss good opportunities again. Good doors will not be shut against you again. Rise up to your feet. We are going to pray. I know. I know that this thing called misfortune can also be triggered spiritually. Arrows can be fired. I remember a man, he just gave someone help. How did he give someone help? Just by giving him money. And the money he gave now became the instrument for his downfall. Some, his handshake, they'll just shake your hand and stamp you poverty. Whoever have collected your money to shoot arrow at you, today, that arrow will scatter. You are going to pray from the depth of your heart. Lord, by this communion, any arrow of misfortune that has been fired against me by wicked personalities, witchcraft agents, by this communion, let the spell be broken. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Any arrow of misfortune fired against my destiny, fired against my career, against my business, by the speaking blood, the blood that speaketh better things, let the arrow backfire. Let the arrow scatter. Let the arrow backfire. Any arrow of misfortune, arrow of financial reproach, arrow of financial demotion, scatter by the blood of Jesus. Any arrow of evil altars, arrow of witchcraft, arrow of occultic men, occultic women, fired against my life. By the blood of Jesus, let the arrow fail. Let the arrow backfire. Let the arrow backfire. In the name of Jesus, any arrow enchanted against me from wicked altars to make me poor, to make me go down financially. Oh, the speaking blood disgrace the arrow of the wicked. In the name of Jesus, let the arrow backfire. Let the arrow backfire. Let the arrow backfire. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name.